This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Weddings are extremely beautiful days. Two people coming together in union to spend their lives together. And you wanna be a part of that. You wanna be the person documenting every beautiful moment, every tear, every smile, every hug. But how? How do you really get started as a wedding photographer? What's up? This is John from John Match for Photography, and I have been a wedding photographer for eight years now. I love every moment of weddings. However, it is not the easiest thing at all. And I'm sure you're asking yourself, how do I become a wedding photographer? Now, that is a pretty loaded question. Honestly, something that I can't easily answer. However, being a wedding photographer myself, I wanna give you some tips to get started and also give you some disclaimers about getting started as a wedding photographer. So to start out with some disclaimers, because these are the things you absolutely need to understand before even trying to become a wedding photographer. Becoming a wedding photographer takes time. It takes a lot of time. It is not something that you just sit down and decide, I'm gonna be a wedding photographer, and then you just do it. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes practice. So give yourself that time and do not rush the process. Please do not just go buy a camera and be like, well, I got a really expensive, good camera, and then say you're a wedding photographer because that's not gonna work out for you. That's not gonna work out for your couples. Also, keep in mind, you have to pay to play. Like with any business, you have to start it out on investments. I made this video in the past about the seven essentials to start a photography business, which you can check out up above. And funny enough, so many comments on there are, oh, all this stuff is so expensive. You have to buy stuff to start a business. No business starts without investments. And you need to realize that you're gonna be making investments when you start wedding photography. And the biggest thing to make sure you understand before you start in wedding photography is that wedding photography is not a money grab. You may see wedding photographers and see them charging two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten thousand dollars for weddings and think, wow, I wish I could make ten thousand dollars for a wedding. It's not as much money as you think because the effort that goes into running a wedding that way, the time you put into your couples, the extra things you have to give your couples, the second photographer, the team for editing and things of that sort, after you chop all of that off, yes, you're making a great amount of money, but it's probably not what you think it is. It's definitely not as easy, so don't get into wedding photography if you only wanna do it for the money. I've talked about it before, and if you all want me to make a video about it, please let me know in the comments below, but wedding photography is pretty much just customer service, honestly. 80% customer service, 20%, not even, more like 10% is taking photos, and then the other 10% is your post-production and how you back up the photos and all that stuff. So really, 80%, customer service dealing with people. If you don't like people, if you don't like customer service jobs, and I mean, even like the worst of customer service jobs, like if you work at Best Buy right now and you're like, I just wanna get out of here and I wanna be a wedding photographer, everything you learned at Best Buy will apply to wedding photography. So don't just write it off. Learn what you can in your job now and apply that to wedding photography because it's just customer service. So now that we've gotten those disclaimers out of the way, let's talk about the three areas that I think are the most important that you need to focus on when you're becoming a wedding photographer. These are gonna be experience, presentation, and clients. Starting out with experience. This is the most important part of becoming a wedding photographer and without experience, you're not able to charge lots of money. Honestly, when you start, please don't think that you have to charge 3,000 to match the market so that you don't bring the market down because if you don't have the experience of a $3,000 wedding photographer, you're doing your couple a disservice. So how do we get this experience? One of the first ways is being a second photographer. As a second photographer, you don't have as much responsibility as the main photographer, but you also get to be a part of a wedding day, learn a wedding day, take photos, and see how everything happens. This is the best way to actually gain experience. Now, the biggest thing to remember about being a second, however, is main photographers are looking for someone they can depend on. So if you've never done a wedding ever at all, being a second is not the answer. 
If you're not good with your camera and can take great, amazing photos on the fly without having to think about it and you know the ins and outs of your camera, if you don't have all of that, you're not ready to second just yet. So don't ask me in the comments, John, I hit up all these photographers all the time and you don't take me as a second. That's because you don't know how to shoot yet. You need to know that first and prove to the photographer that you can support them. So if you're trying to get experience from the start, like 100% I have no idea what I'm doing, you may need to be a third photographer. And as a third, you're pretty much not doing anything. At most, you're probably carrying light stands, but your pictures at that point don't matter. But either way, you're gaining the knowledge of seeing how a wedding day runs, seeing how a photographer handles the wedding day, and this experience will help you when you get to your first wedding. Speaking of your first wedding, definitely check out this video right up above where I talk about things to get you started on your first wedding. The next place to gain experience is to be a photography associate. Now, being an associate is kind of the next stage of a second photographer. You've been working with a business for long enough, they start booking more weddings and they want to divvy them out a little bit more than just them handling the main weddings and you have enough experience at this point that they think you can handle a wedding. So essentially you're shooting the wedding, you're running everything else, however it's under someone else's business and someone else's brand. This still takes some of the responsibility off of you because everything is under that business's brand, however this is the closest you'll get to shooting your own wedding yourself. Now taking half of the responsibility off is probably the biggest part. What we tend to forget, which is what I talked about earlier, is that wedding photography is customer service. So as an associate, most of that customer service, most of the customer service side is not on you. That's what the main business is handling. Your customer service is mainly on the day of. This again is a great way to get your feet wet, to start shooting weddings where you're the main person running that day and doing awesome. And then after that, you can start moving into the whole process, which is actually talking to your couples, getting them to book before the fact. And the last area of experience, which is probably the best, is a photography mentorship. With mentorships, you have someone who's gonna show you the ropes, someone who actually cares about your experience and wants to grow you as a photographer. Not just someone who wants to teach you so that you can be an associate for them, but someone who truly, truly believes in you and wants to teach you so that you learn. I was lucky enough to have a mentor for myself which I got into about two years of already doing weddings. I was shooting weddings by myself. I was handling them very well, but it was, uh, to be honest, like I barely knew what I was doing. And then I got a mentor and everything changed. The me you see now would not be who I am without the photography mentorship that I went through. And speaking of my mentor, definitely check out this video up above where we both shoot a model together. It's a fun little video we made. It's always great hanging out with Phil. But seriously, find yourself a mentorship, someone who really will try and pour into you. I myself do give small mentorship sessions, so if you have questions about your portfolio, your photos, or just how to take photos, definitely make sure to sign up for that. You can check it out down below in the description. Now that we've talked about experience, which is the first area of becoming a wedding photographer, the second area is gonna be presentation. Presentation is just as important as experience because without an amazing presentation, you're not gonna get new couples, and without getting new couples, your business will not last. Presentation includes your branding, your website, your social media, and just how you show yourself at all times. Your website and branding is the first place of this presentation. And having a beautiful website is hands down the most important part of your presentation, which you can do with this video sponsor, Squarespace. If you don't have a website now and you're looking to become a wedding photographer, you need to sign up for Squarespace this very moment. Squarespace is an online platform to help you build your website quick and easily and get your portfolio out to the world. With beautiful built-in templates, you're able to choose a template, put your photos into it, and show your best work to your potential clients. And with the amazing customer service they have, you know you always have someone to get in touch with if you're having problems with your website. Also, there's commerce and analytics, which is hands down one of the most important things for a wedding photographer because you can see where people are seeing your website from and if there's other websites that have backlinks that are leading to your website as well. Make sure to check out the link in the description below for 10% off of your first website or domain. Also with your presentation, something that's super important is having a consistent style. 
One thing I see people make a huge mistake on most of the time is not realizing that as a wedding photographer, specifically a wedding photographer, you need to have a consistent style. You are selling a product and your photos are that product. I know it's fun to be creative as a photographer and have all kinds of different styles and things, but your couples are not gonna know what they're gonna get for you if you never have a consistent style. If your Instagram and your website and your Facebook and everything you have online looks the same and the photos look the same, your couples know what they're getting. They can see your photos and say, this is exactly what I want. I love the way it looks. No matter what wedding that this person is shooting, they look amazing and I want this look. So having a consistent style is extremely important. One way you can have a consistent style is by using presets. You can develop your own or you can actually have the exact same look that I have in my own photos. Yes, I sell my preset. So if you don't know where to start and you want something to get you started in Lightroom with editing, definitely make sure to check out my preset below in the description. And the last thing a part of your presentation is gonna be your personality. This shines through the words on your website, the way you present yourself on social media, and just the way you act with your couples when you meet with them, which you definitely should always be meeting with your couples, either in person or over Zoom. Your personality should shine through everything, through your photos, through your color choices, through your verbiage, and your couple should know exactly who you are and how you operate. Again, with building your website, you should be able to put this on your website. In an about me section, you can write that out, but it should also flow through the rest of your presentation. A great example of this is your photos, your verbiage, and your style should all cohesively feel the same. So for example, for my branding, I have artistry and authenticity. This is what explains my brand and my approach. For my photos, you see beautiful styled photos, but you also see very candid moments, both together, artistry and authenticity. You see someone who likes to approach posing their couples, but in a very natural, candid style, artistry and authenticity. And the same way I present myself with my couples, I like to be close with them like a friend, like someone they can hang out with and go to a bar and just have a drink and have a good time. Artistry and authenticity. And that should always be the case. No matter what your branding is, it should carry through at all times, no matter where you are, in person, on your website, on social media. And when couples see that, that is how they're going to book you. Which actually leads us right next to the third thing to becoming a wedding photographer, which is clients. Getting clients is probably the hardest part about wedding photography. That's the first question that always comes up when anyone asks, how do I become a wedding photographer? Where do I get couples? How do I find couples? Do I advertise? What do I do? The first place to start out is going to be social media mainly because that is free. Again, with presentation, which we just talked about earlier, if you have an amazing presentation on social media, people will find you, they will find your style, they will love your style, and they will get in touch with you. Again, that consistency needs to carry over through all your social media accounts. And your verbiage and the way you present yourself on social media is what's gonna get you booked. So make sure you're paying attention to social media. Make sure that your website looks great and is accessible, through social media. This is the first place of getting clients. It's the easiest and the freest. <laughs> then after that, you do have to advertise. Like I said before, you have to pay to play. Now, keep in mind, advertising can be a trap. Do not throw all of your money into advertising thinking that it's gonna automatically get you clients. That's just not how it works. However, if you're very pinpointed with your advertising, it will help you find new clients. One place to start out with that is through social media. Since you already have the social media up, you can always boost a post to help you find people. But again, you wanna be very pinpoint. One tip you can do is advertise in the area of venues that you wanna shoot at. Or let's say you've taken photos at a venue, advertise in the area with that photo of the venue so that people who go to the venue people who live in the area of the venue will see your advertising. Don't just blanket advertise to everybody because that's basically just throwing money to the wind. You don't wanna do that. You wanna very pinpointedly say, I want to advertise towards this one single person. When you can do that, when you can truncate down your advertising that low, you will get amazing results. Another place to focus on is things like the knot and wedding wire. 
These are great places to sign up and show your brand and they will bring you clients as well. This counts as advertising also. Again with this, this can be a trap as well, so you have to be careful. Don't put too much money into the knot or wedding wire, but having a healthy budget for it can highly help your business. When I moved from New York to North Carolina and booked my first 40 weddings, that was mainly all because of the knot in the advertising I did in North Carolina. However, at that time, I did have a brand and I did have a portfolio, so that helped out heavily. So again, don't just jump on the knot with like three photos. You're like, yay, I'm advertising. You're gonna be wasting your money. Don't do that. Getting on something like the knot or wedding wire, putting money into advertising, this comes after you've built a fairly decent portfolio. And last but not least is getting clients through word of mouth. Now again, like I said earlier, with wedding photography being 80% customer service, this is where word of mouth comes in the most. If you're giving your couples an amazing experience, if your branding is on point and consistent all the way through, if your photos are consistent all the way through, this gives you word of mouth. Showing up, treating your couples well, showing up an hour early at a wedding day, being there for your couples, these are the things that get you word of mouth advertising. Don't run up on your couples being like, hey, suggest me to all your friends. That's great and all, but they're not going to want to suggest you unless they had an amazing experience with you. And the best way for them to have a great experience is by you actually working on your own experience as a wedding photographer and also your presentation as a wedding photographer. I talk about all these things in this video here and also you can watch me shoot whole wedding days in this video above as well. Definitely make sure to check out those videos and go ahead and start learning more about becoming a wedding photographer. And I'll catch you in the next videos.